UFC London is in the bag, and it was an incredibly exciting card. Mark and I are going to go over the fallout of UFC London, but before we do, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe as we have brand new videos every single week. So, Mark, let's start with the main event. Our boy Tom Aspinall finished Mass and Ty Bora in the first round. Is this what you expected? It's what I expected initially when the fight got announced. I was like, I was thinking Tom's just going to slice through him. The closer it got to the fight, I thought, well, you know, it's his first fight back in over a year after the injury. How's he going to cope? All this, you know, like Martin Tybura, you know, he is a top 10. Tom didn't take him lightly, but the initial thoughts turned out to be true. Tom sliced through him. He made yeah. quick work of him. He was so much sharper so much quicker so much power and that right hand that put martin down jesus christ yeah i mean it, it, it's what we expected right we'd we'd predicted and bet on tom to win by first round knockout and it seems so obvious but you're right like there was a slight hesitation i was concerned about tom coming back he's put on all this extra muscle he's been out for a year he's come off an injury Sometimes that can be very, very risky, right? It's, it can be, you know, some people return from injury and they're never the same again. And luckily, that's not happened to Tom and he's come back even better. It seems in some way this injury was the best thing for him. It's like he's 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 changed his complete mindset, right? He never seemed to be looking too far forward into the future. But Talking of his future, at the end of the fight, he said he's going to go for the Garn versus Spivak fight, fight the winner of that, and then go for John Jones. How is it exciting, Mark, to see Thomas Brown move up those heavyweight rankings and see him in a heavyweight championship fight? Well, like we were saying in the live stream, it's extremely important as a fan because we've seen him come from the prelims of a fight night during the pandemic when there was no one in the arena to now be one win away from a title shot. You presume that's the way that it's going to go as well. It depends on what happens with Sergei Pavlovich. But you literally called it. You said you want him to fight Garn. If after Garn, presuming that he beats Spivak, you might get your dream fight in the bag, Dwayne. I mean, Garn versus Aspinall, it really does shake up these heavyweight rankings. It's nice just to have a fresh face right up in title contention in heavyweight, isn't it? Because it's been a little, a little bit lacklustre for a few years now. But it's really yeah. getting spiced up, especially with how easy Tom made it look against Marcin Tagura. Yeah, well, that's the thing. We've said it before, haven't we? With the heavyweight division, it's very, very interesting. You can be a top contender and then you're getting knocked out on fight nights. Whereas it's not just enough to be big and strong anymore. You need to be a technically able fighter. And you've got people like John Jones, Cyril Garn, um, Stipe Miocic, and now Tom Aspinall nipping on their heels and looking for that title shot. And I cannot wait. I genuinely think Tom Aspinall might be the first pin, first person to finish John Jones. I'm really, really excited for it. But let's move on to the co-main event. Our girl, Molly McCann, got finished in the first round via armbar. Um, to be honest, it was one of those things where you were kind of expecting it and not expecting it. It, it felt like it could go either way because that Julia, whatever her name is, um, <laughs> it, you know, she'd come off all these losses and we thought, oh, well, she's just getting fed a can here. But when we saw Molly McCann's last outing and when Julia has got such great submissions, Maybe it was a bit more obvious than we should have realised. Maybe we should have seen that coming. That's the thing. But, you know, don't forget, people are emotionally involved as well. They're emotionally invested in these because it's a UFC London. We've got another English fighter on there, another British fighter, should I say. People are gunning for it. They see this. They, they remember moments, not full fights, and they're quick to forget losses. You know, you remember the spinning back elbows that Molly McCann yeah. has, has pulled off last year. You don't really seem to be looking at someone who you're rooting against. But I'll be honest, Wayne, I don't actually know the finish of that fight because as soon as an armbar is locked in, I just shun my face away. I can't watch them. I can't see it. I know the result. I'm happy with that. I don't need to see an arm bending the other you way. Don't need to see it. Yeah, it's gross, isn't it? It's always horrible. And the thing is, Molly kind of rolled into it. It was really bad. I think, you know, unfortunately, Molly's grappling is just not good enough at this level. You know, she she's great against other strikers and she's shown she's got fantastic hand speed, good level striking, 
but her grappling is just not good enough. And she, if she's expecting to jump up this division, I'd say she's only got a couple of years left on her career. She needs to figure that grappling out. At least her grappling defense, you don't have to necessarily be offensive, but, you know, it's a real shame. And I'm just not sure where she's going to go from this, right? It's, it's a tricky spot for her. It's tough because you always want to see Molly fight, but you, you want to see a fight, but you want to see the devastating power that she mm. possesses on display, don't you? We were saying in the very first round, well, it ended in the first round, when <laughs> Molly was throwing that right, you think if that connects, that could be it. Well, as yeah. soon as it gets to the ground and you see the you see where Julia's legs were positioned, where her body was positioned, especially against the fence, Molly turned over into an armbar, but against the fence, there isn't a lot you can really do, is there? You know, like... Like I said, I turned away anyway, the way, so I'm not actually sure. And I'm quite happy not watching the finish of that fight. Yeah, I don't blame you at all. But a fight that I felt should have been finished a little bit earlier, and I may have complained about it about 50 million times during our live stream, we have Nathaniel Wood versus Andre Philly. Nathaniel Wood got the decision win, but it was an incredibly exciting fight with a real big back and forth. It felt like it was kind of like the Midas touch, the death touch, like whoever just managed to get each other's chin, they just kept dropping each other all the time. It was a really, really exciting fight. Do you think this was kind of a sleeper fight on the card, Mark? Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's it's nice to be pleasantly surprised with a fight like that as well, because like you said, it could have gone either way at any point as well. Uh, in immediately, I think within the first, what, 30 seconds, Nathaniel Wood was down, straight back up like a whippet. But, you know, it was back and forth, back and forth, and he had that huge moment as well where he got him down. They weren't, I, I kind of fell a little, I wasn't 100% in agreement with you in that sense because they weren't <laughs> completely unanswered strikes. You know, like he was mm. moving around, he had his he's had his, uh, his guard up, that kind of thing, trying to get as best he can. I've seen worse stoppages than that to be fair 100 percent. i think i'd have been more sour about it if nathaniel had lost but to to me it looked like there was like 20 30 unanswered strike it seemed a lot maybe i'm exaggerating slightly but it did feel like a lot and i was really concerned i thought you know come on i've seen fights be stopped a lot earlier but you know it is what it is and but i'm excited to see where nathaniel goes from here i think after that performance he put on he really showed that he's a high level fighter, how he's able to, even when he's in a submission threat, he didn't panic and he took control. And I'm super, super excited to see what he can do in that featherweight division. Maybe take a big jump up real soon, fight someone like Calvin Kerr or someone big, get up in title contention because we need more featherweight contenders. We're desperate for it. So I'd love to see Nathaniel would move up there. Um, but then we move on to one of my favourite fights of the night. We have Paul Craig versus Andre Munez. Paul Craig got, what did he get? Second round TKO, that was it. Um, And honestly, Paul Craig looked exceptional. I feel like he's really, really found his weight class. Mark, are you in agreement with that? I would love to see him continue to fight at middleweight, to be honest. Uh, He looked comfortable, he looked lean, he looked in shape. Uh, His cardio looked fine. But the as great a finish as it was to see Paul Craig get a TKO, not a submission, you know, that's something in itself. But uh, he was headbutted, accidental, but he was headbutted. They stood the action up, and then it wasn't too long until Paul got the finish. Be that as it may, Paul <laughs> looked good. It looked like he has been working on his striking a little bit more mm. because we've seen him in his, you know, previous outings against Johnny <laughs> Walker, that kind of thing, where you think, oh, it's almost like, come on, be be more of a striker. I asked for it last week, didn't I? I said I wanted to see Paul Craig improve his striking, introduce more strikes, and I got it. He got a TKO victory, so I can't complain at all. Yeah, 100%. And he didn't even have to necessarily be a fantastic striker, but he's got to have good striking defence. If you're um, a heavy grappler like that, you need that ability to defend yourself. And he was getting some big takedowns as well in the middle of the octagon. I think I really do think Paul Craig's found his division now at 35, left it a little bit late. But, you know, I can really see him making some big waves. You know, we could see him move up into this top 10, even top five, because don't forget the middleweight division is a very striking, heavy division. And if he can grab some of these guys, he can have a lot of success. But 
Overall, I really, really enjoyed UFC London. Um, you know, it started off a bit slow. I thought, oh, I'm not really into this. I'm, I was a bit concerned because you look at the card on paper, it didn't seem super exciting, but you had some really, really fun fights. You, know, you had Barbarena, you had Jai Herbert. And there was a lot of other good fights. And obviously Mark's future wife, Shana, Shana, Shana Bronan, was that her name? Uh, she got absolutely battered. Shana Reed. Shana Reed. <laughs> <laughs> but... Either way, it's a really, really good card. Um, and I'm looking forward to the next event for UFC 291 next week. Make sure you check our predictions that will be going up on Monday night. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the card. Thank you for watching. If you can like, comment and subscribe, it really does help us out.